Mr. Ozee, could you uh, state and spell your name for the record, please? Uh, my name is my name is Maltez Azza, uh, spelled as M O A T A Z. Last name is A Z Z E H. And how old are you, sir? I'm 32. And where are you from originally? I was born in Chicago, but I lived in Jordan when I was young, and that is where the accent is from. <laughs> so you grew up in Jordan? Yes. Um, did you go to high school here in the, in the Houston area? Yes, I did, in Clearbrook High School. And what did you do after high school? I joined the military. And uh, in what capacity did you join the military? What did you do? I, I was uh, in the military intelligence. I spoke the language, and uh, I uh, worked interrogation, and uh, I analyzed um, intelligence uh, documents. And so what branch of the military did you join? Army. And what year was it that you joined? 2003. 2003? Yes, when I signed with them. When and I, signed uh, up. I assume because of the time frame here, uh, you were deployed overseas? Correct, yes. Where, I was, where, where were you deployed to? I was uh, deployed to Iraq. And how many deployments did you have? I had uh, one deployment. Um, ended with my injury, so. And you said it ended with your injury, correct? Yes. Okay, well, what happened when, in regard to your injury? Uh, I was wounded by uh, an IED. Uh, I was dis medically discharged for, you know, from the injuries. I was uh, discharged uh, at the end of 2006. And what did you do after your discharge? I uh, went to the University of Houston and got my degree um, in uh, computer science, software engineering. And did you, gra you graduate and got your degree? Yes. What I, year was that? I graduated in 2012, December 2012. Now, uh, the defendant in this case, Leon Jacob, do you know who that is? Yes. Do you see him here in the courtroom today? Yes, it's, he's in Denver. Okay, could you just identify him by something that he's wearing today? Uh, a suit with uh, blue and lines of uh, tie. You are, may the record reflect the witness identified the defendant? The record will so reflect. Could you tell us how you came into contact with Mr. Jacob initially? Um, I was... Uh, called by a friend of a friend, um, and uh, her name is Laura. Uh, we, uh, we met before uh, briefly, uh, but my, f uh, my friend apparently told her about my uh, uh, history in the military, and uh, basically told her that um, I'm his best friend. Uh, so uh, the day uh, that... Okay, let me stop you there, okay? okay. Um, the person that you're talking about, when you say if Laura is a friend of a friend, what friend is it that you're talking about? Um, his name is Kenneth. Um, okay. And how do, you, how do you know Kenneth, or how did you know Kenneth? Uh, Kenneth was a friend um, that I met at U a University of Houston, and uh, we were best friends. And we, uh, he was uh, around. Uh, he was a lot older than me, but we kind of clicked at the university, and uh, ever since we've been, you know, hanging out and. Uh, was he a student at the same time you No, were? he was working there. Okay, he worked at the university? Yes. Okay. So from the time that you were at the university uh, through the time that you graduated and up until last year, you two remained friends? Yes, till he actually passed away. Uh, were, were, you, uh, were the two of you ever living together? Was there ever a roommate? Or a uh, whenever, when I, whenever I was at the University of Houston, he actually stayed with me for two months. Yeah. And I, and I mentioned, you mentioned something a moment ago, and I, I wanted to make sure that everybody heard it. You said... He passed away. Yes. Um, the night before uh, Laura contacted me, um, he had a stroke and passed away. Um, and I had um, his, uh, his stuff, his phone. And whenever Laura called him, uh, I answered. Uh, I wanted to tell her what happened. And then uh, she told me about, you know, the situation. Did you say something? Objection, please, Your Honor. I apologize. Not to repeat what somebody else tells you, okay? Sure. Now, you mentioned before that you had met Laura on a prior occasion. Yes. Was that through Kenneth? Yes. Were you friends with Laura? Um, I, I knew her, but I wasn't, uh, at that time I wasn't really, um, I keep to myself usually, so uh, I did not know her as a friend yet, so. You just met her before? Yes. Okay. And when you said, you said a moment ago when the day before Kenneth, the day before Laura contacted you, Kenneth passed away. 
when she actually contacted you, she was actually calling to speak to Kenneth. Is that right? Yes. So she called Kenneth's phone. Yes. That you had. Yes. Okay. And and you answered the phone, and the two of you had a discussion. Correct. Okay. And was that discussion some of that discussion regarding the defendant in this case? Correct. Okay. And uh, what did you tell Laura in relation to the defendant? I uh, told her to uh, uh, that he will expect a call from me and uh, basically to set up a meeting um, after. So I'm not supposed to say what she told yeah, me, right? She, yeah, you can't talk about anything that she told you. It's only right. what you told her, okay? Okay, so, so after, uh, after I was aware of the situation, I told her that I would call him and uh, to give me his number so I can actually... Um, uh, I really wanted to, uh, you know, to get a look at how serious it is, and uh, if, uh, you know, uh, if I actually should, uh, like, worry, and the only way I can do it is by talking to the defendant. Okay, so you at this point tell Laura to tell the defendant that I'm going to call him. Yes. And... Just so we're clear, you did that for the reason of trying to figure out exactly how serious and what the situation was. Correct. Okay. Um, did you actually call the defendant? I did. Okay. And, and did you call him from your cell phone, a home phone? I uh, used uh, um, an app called Fake ID, and it basically uh, masks my number. And uh, I called him, and I uh, set up a meeting at the Fresco. At the Fresco. I'm sorry, Del Frisco's? Yes. Okay, so you spoke to him on the phone? Correct, yes. And, and just so we're clear, you used, you used some apparatus by which the number that he would show up on his phone would not be your true number? Yes. Okay. Um, and did that meeting take place? Yes, it did. Do you recall about what time um, of the month, um, this is obviously early last year, but what, what day or what time of the month this was? Uh, I don't remember the exact date, but I know at the beginning of February sometime. Sometime in the beginning of February 2017. Yes. Okay. And when you met with the defendant, who was at that meeting? It was just uh, Leon Jacob and I. And uh, what was discussed at that meeting? Uh, basically, um, he actually, this, uh, basically, uh, at first, um, Leon Jacob was uh, more of uh, trying to be uh, vague about what he wanted. Um, he did actually... Uh, First thing he did is uh, offer me, uh, offer to buy me a drink. I asked for a uh, Coke, and uh, I played uh, basically, um, and, you know, like uh, what Hollywood would show of a mercenary or a hitman, which is basically stayed quiet, listened, and the more um, he talked, the more he started to open up, and uh, he told me that basically um, his. So I can't say what he told me, or since he's yeah, a defendant, I can't. Okay, he told me that um, basically uh, that he, uh, his ex, has an assault case on him, and that is it's destroying his life, and that he wants me to actually um, kidnap her, uh, basically to convince her that. Uh, that, that to, to drop it, and as long as he can talk to her um, because she loves him and he loves her, she would actually change her mind, so he wants to be there at the, you know, where, where I kidnap her. And if it, if it doesn't work, um, he actually wanted me to um, make her disappear, in, uh, you know, in a way. And what did you, when he said make her disappear, what did you take that to mean? Oh, uh, basically he wanted her gone like that, you know. Uh, that, that was your impression of what he wanted for yes. her. Yes. Okay. Uh, did he did he bring anything with him at that to that first meeting to let you know that he was serious about yes. what he wanted? Yes. Um, whenever I made. Uh, let me yeah. um, I, if, Let me ask the question first and wait till I'm done with the question. I know you may want to answer the question because you think you know what I'm going to ask, but just just because she's typing everything. Oh. Make sorry, sure I finish that. the question first before you answer. Okay. 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 Uh, and my question was, did he bring anything with you um, to show that he was serious about what he wanted with Megan? Did he, yeah. did he bring anything with him? Sorry, with him. Yes, sir. Yes, um, he did. Um, on the phone call, I asked him to bring 2500 to see how serious he is. And if he did, um, then I actually figured he's really serious. And, so. and he brought that money? Yes. And did he give it to you that night? Yes. 
When the first meeting with the defendant ended, what was the plan going forward from there? Um, the plan for me was to actually uh, find out um, a way to protect Megan and to see how I can approach this the best way I could and to guarantee that uh, I keep Megan out of his reach. Um, okay, I, let, me, let me stop you there. Did you know who Megan was? No. Okay. What, what, what information did you have on Megan at that time? At that time, uh, basically, before I met him, I didn't have except her name. Um, uh, Laura did uh, mention that she worked at a hotel. Um, but most of the information that I gathered, gathered to co convince um, Lee and Jacob that I am uh, someone that is capable of uh, basically of being a mercenary, to convince him that I'm a mercenary, I actually gathered most of the information about him. And whenever I met with him, I gave him the information. But when it comes to Megan, I told him I will not share any information about Megan because it might, you might just take it yourself or, you know, outsource it. Um, it was a way to cover. So in regards to Megan, all you really knew at that point was her name. Yes. And that she worked at a hotel. Yes. When I met, when I met with J Leon Jacob, he showed me um, a picture and a license plate of her car. Okay, so he, he showed you a picture and a license plate of her car. Uh, he showed me a picture with him and her, and, uh, and, and then another picture of her li license plate of her car. May I approach the judge? Mr. Adi, I'm going to show you. Tell me if you recognize that. Um, I actually cannot remember, but... Um, the license plate, but the car, yes. Okay, the car here. Um, does this does this appear to be the picture that was sent to you by Leon Jacob? I uh, know it was actually more dark toward the back. Okay, so this was a picture of you believe to be the same car, yes. but it was just from a different angle. Yes, and when I when I got that picture, I really didn't pay attention to it because my my target was not Megan. My target was to protect Megan, so I needed I, I didn't need information about her. Like I really didn't need to actually get her involved if um, if I didn't have to. Right, so Mr. Rose, you said this, this picture is very similar to the picture that was sent to you by the defendant uh, regarding Megan's vehicle. Yes. Now, was it actually, was the picture shown to you or was it sent to you? I, I can't, I, I think I was, I asked for, for, for a copy of it, I think, just to convince him, but I cannot recall, to be honest, because it was not important to me, and I tried to, I tried to ignore as much information so I can profile him. Cool. I can't recall. I, I, I remember seeing it, but I can't recall if it was sent to me. Okay. Um, did, did you and the defendant establish any type of way which you would communicate with each other that did not involve cell phones? Yes, I set up an email and I told them to actually um, save emails as a draft. Um, this way it wouldn't be sent. It's also a way to convince him that basically I know what I'm doing and uh, to gain more of his trust. Okay. So you would set up an email account to communicate, you would each log on, write what you had to write as a draft, it would never be sent to a third party, the other party could log on and read it as a draft, correct? Yes. So there would never be a record of it being sent to anyone? Yes. Okay. And uh, we've asked you for that email address, correct? Yes. And you, you weren't really sure whether you could remember it, you, you can't really remember what it is, correct? Yes, I, uh, I remember the username but not password. Now, um, you said going forward from there, after the first meeting, you were kind of trying to figure out what to do with the situation. Um, what, what was the next step in your contact with the defendant? Um, I, I actually was profiling him. I uh, needed um, to understand um, the threat. Uh, so uh, I actually took a day or two, I believe, to actually uh, think of my next step. And uh, this is when um, he started uh, calling Laura. So I called him, told him to back off from Laura and uh, that she's off limit. Um, and uh, uh, basically I will be in contact. At that point I established that he has an obsessive uh, personality. He likes to control things. So uh, going forward. Let me stop you there, okay? Okay. Um, Again, like, I'm, 
I, I, I know you I know you want to explain what happened, all right? But I'm gonna have to jump in and just and stop so everybody understands what the question is and what the answer is, okay? Okay. Um, at the point that you were paid the first time, you were paid by the defendant, it was your impression that he wanted her out of the picture. It meant to you that ultimately that was up to and including having her killed, correct? Yes. Why didn't you contact the police? I, uh, I actually um, didn't uh, think that um, his, it, the idea that I got about Leon Jacob is that he's a surgeon and he was, uh, he had resources. Um, it would be my word against his word, and I do not have connections. I also um, actually didn't know if uh, uh, if it would actually uh, if they would actually talk to him and alert him. Like if I talked to a uniform, so I did not want to take the chance. Um, the pro uh, you know the pro uh, the probability was not uh, there was actually a chance that this all can fail, and he would actually do it himself or go for someone else. And so. But you personally, was there any concerns you had about the officer not believing what you had to say? Yes, I actually did because at the time I had a pending case. So Your pending case at the time was for what? Um, it was for a possession of stolen property. Um, and did, was that case, has that case been resolved? Yes, it was. And uh, I completed the, uh, the probation time. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been resolved. So you were, you were on probation, but you've, been, you've since completed that? Yes. Um, and at the time, going back to January, February, March 2017, were you ever offered anything from either a police officer or my office in regards to your cooperation? No. Uh, uh, nobody ever told you your case will go away if you, if you cooperate? No. Uh, no. It was clear that um, that's not good. In the conversations about her being kidnapped, did he ever say to you during the course of this relationship, these, these several times that you either met in person or talked on the phone, did he ever say anything specific to you about what he wanted done with her? Yes, he actually wanted her, um, he, he, he wanted to uh, basically uh, meet with her, talk to her, because she's going to be convinced, but if she's not, he wanted her gone, like dead gone. And uh, um, I tried to convince him that, uh, you know, to keep him away, to see if he's actually going to push toward, uh, the, you know, the, the, the death thing. And he actually pushed. He kept on going with it, even though I was giving him options, even though I wasn't acting on it, but I just wanted to see how far he would go. He kept on pushing toward the death, um, and uh, like he wanted it to end, if, it's not, if she's not going to take him back or drop the case. So he, was, he was clear to you that if things weren't going his way, he wanted her gone, as in dead gone. Yes. And so after you said you talked, you, you called him, and one of the purposes, I guess, or maybe the sole purpose, was to alert him about the fact that he'd been charged with stalking. You said he already knew, right? Yes. Okay. At any point during your relationship with the defendant, did you ever uh, give him the name or um, suggest uh, the name of Michael Kubosh to him? Yes. I actually uh, gave him uh, the name of uh, uh, Michael Kubosh as a bail bond um, and, I, and masked my number. Uh, because the name that uh, Leon Jacob knew me by was Zach, um, and I talked to Kubish before, um, and he told me about his connections. So I actually unmasked my number, uh, hoping that Leon Jacob would actually talk to him, since I gave him the connection of Kubish, and he's more credible than I am. And so you mentioned before, um the name the defendant knew you as was Zach, correct? Yes. Is that a name you normally go by? Uh, I go by uh, Taz or Zach. Zach is actually uh, a name that I used a little bit at U of H, and uh, Laura knew me by that name, Zach. Now, um, were, you, were you aware of the defendant ever being arrested on that stalking charge? Um, I know that he was bonded. Uh, I... Uh, um, I, he told me that he should, uh, he's going to court and he was bonded. I, I didn't know actually he was actually got in jail. I remember that. And in, in this time period, what, what type of communication were you having with the defendant? Were you calling him daily? Were you calling him uh, a couple times a day? How was that, how was that going? After I gave him Kovac's number, I actually um, uh, left him for three days so he can actually uh, become obsessive and start looking for me and so he can go talk to Kovac. Uh, and then uh, 
I called them and uh, nothing was happening, so I thought that did not work. Um, so I wanted to get him to the stock and a charge and uh, see how um, basically uh, at this point a stock and charge would should scare him, but it didn't. And at this point, uh, I started building more trust. I started calling him, and he he started. Uh, planning, uh, like giving suggestions on how to kill. And, uh, and I've seen, uh, basically, uh, he had no remorse. He, he was uh, self-obsessed, and he really wanted it done. Okay, so I want to kind of back up to the, the first plan where you said you had kidnapped Megan, and she showed up to the hearing. And after that, he was still convinced that you were who you said you were. Yes. So he believed that you actually, your, your impression was that he believed that you had actually kidnapped her and you told her to leave, but she didn't. Yes. Now, how was it over the next several days or weeks, how was it that you were able to convince him and what were you telling him about the next step in the plan? So if, 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 if that didn't work, what sort of things were you telling him around the time of the stocking charge about whether you would be able to do anything for him in regards to Megan? Um. At this point, I was uh, I was uh, given information uh, about him, but keeping Megan covered in a way that there's no information shared. So um, I kept on my uh, cover, and I actually my cover was also not to talk too much, um, so not to give information that is not necessary, um, and it always made him more uh, like he wanted. Uh, it made him more convinced, and he also wanted to be more uh, in control of the situation, which made his focus on me now. He wanted to actually, you know, know me, control me, make sure that I do what I, you know, what it is that he actually wanted. Uh, at, at this point, whenever the stock in charge was coming up so he can go to court, I actually told him that uh, killing her right now is gonna be, uh, is gonna come back at you, so I told him, we can actually, I can set her up with a felony. I can send my team, uh, crash her car, plan drugs, and she can get arrested for it. And then she not, she will not show show up to to the stocking, uh, to the to the court that day, and I'll be dismissed. Uh, based based on the information of the dismissal, it was um, him telling me that his lawyer told him that if she doesn't show up, it'll be dismissed. So you were convincing him that now's not the right time to kill her because you were just charged with stalking and they're, they're going to obviously come back and look at you first, right? Yes, and, and showing him that I'm concerned about him is to build trust and it, it works, uh, and it worked actually. And so then there was a plan. Um, you suggested a plan to cause an accident with her vehicle, plant drugs in her car. So I'm to this time. Let's just say there, did you just mention another plan? Yes about planting drugs in her car? Yes. Okay, and that, was, that involved a car crash, correct? Yes, we crashed her car and planned uh, drugs to it. Did that ever happen? No. Okay. Um, did, this, did you ever tell him it happened, much like the last time where you said it had with the kidnapping? No, I told them that uh, my team was interrupted by cops and they were arrested, and I blamed them for it. Um, his personality is he likes to show off, talk about himself, so I figured he would tell somebody that she would not show up. So I told him, who did you tell? My team is gone, they were arrested, and, uh, you know, I, I made it as a, it sounds like a problem, like I'm pissed off. And uh, I, at this point, I was actually planning to get hard evidence, um, so I can actually be able to go to the cops and it might be more believable. Did it appear as though when you told him about this plan gone wrong a second time, did he appear to believe you that your yes. didn't work out and your team had been arrested? Yes, he did. He, he believed me. Now, at any point around this time period, were you contacted by an investigator from our office? Um, it was uh, after, um, after the the whole stocking situation happened a week, I think, or a week later, I was actually contacted by um, Mike and his partner. I'm sorry, I, I can't remember his last name. Um, two, but two investigators from the Harris County DA's office? Yes. Okay. And did you speak with them about what you knew? 
At first, I got in the car and um, I wanted to see like uh, what like if, if if it was if if they can take it over and they have enough information to know how serious it is. Um, as as soon as I got in the car, um, I figured that the reason um, they contacted me was because of Kobush. So whenever I got in the car, um, it seemed like they didn't have the full idea of how dangerous it is. So I actually um, started talking. I'm sorry, Councilman. Slow down. Yes, sorry, it's hearsay and fascinating. So don't refer to it. And so you, you said that you, you got in the car with them. Um, did you ultimately give a statement about what you knew in the situation as it had been for the last several weeks? Yes. Uh, during your course of your relationship with the defendant, uh, did you ever obtain anything from him aside from cash? Yes, after the stocking um, uh, case, I actually uh, received uh, two watches from him. And I was able to convince him to give me the receipts because I told him that I checked it out and it's fake. So he wanted to prove to me that not. So I got the receipts and that is hard evidence to me. At this point, I was actually planning to use it, but the detective approached me at the same time. So. And, and what did you do with the, the cash that the defendant had given you? The cash was spent. It was spent by you? Yes. Um, the, the watches and the ring, what happened with those? I gave them to the detective. Um, have you been promised anything or offered anything in exchange for your testimony today regarding what you did with that money? No. Okay. And you've spoken with a lawyer about that, correct? Yes. Okay. And you, you mentioned that the watch is in the ring you turned over to the investigators you spoke with? Yes. Now, after you were contacted by investigators from the DA's office, did you ever meet with any officers from the Houston Police Department? I, I met with an undercover team um, so we can actually talk and discuss um, what, we, what would we do uh, moving forward. And, and when you met with them, what was the plan going forward? Um, basically, I was, uh, I'm supposed to uh, introduce uh, Javier, um, one of the detectives, to uh, Leon and introduce him as um, uh, another hitman, uh, ex-military, and uh, basically uh, Tell Jacob that I am I can't I can't go forward with this anymore. But he, uh, you know I'm giving him in the right hands, and I'm supposed to pass it over to the to the team to the undercover team. And so, did you agree to make the introduction between Officer Duran and the defendant? Yes, I did. And do you recall where that meeting took place? Uh, Olive Garden on Kirby. Now, up to this point, did you have any knowledge of a separate problem with? Um, the ex-husband of Valerie McDaniel. There, there was problem mentioned about, about the ex-husband, but um, at, until the point of uh, the meeting with the with the uh, with the undercover team, it was not going toward um, killing um, Mac. It was more of uh, a problem that that they were complaining that is he's uh, being inconvenient to them. And so. The the phone call that's placed to, to set up the meeting to the defendant was from you, correct? Yes. And uh, were you present at the meeting the following day? Yes, I was. Where, where, where did that meeting take place? Olive Garden. Uh, do you remember which one it was, where in town it is? Uh, it's in the, on 59 Kirby, I believe. And, and what was it that you were going to tell the defendant in regard to Officer Duran? Um, I, I was telling him that he was... Um, a friend, I knew him, and he's actually someone that will take care of, uh, you know, of basically the worst situations. And uh, who was present at that meeting that you had with uh, Valerie, me, Javier, um, and Leon Jacob. Uh, so Valerie McDaniel, the defendant, the officer, Javier Duran, and you. Yes, correct. And when you made the introductions at, at, at the meeting, uh, what, what did you say? Um, I actually uh, don't remember the exact words, but it was mostly um, building trust between Leon Jacob and uh, Javier. Um, I remember making a joke about uh, like uh, something that I would know about a friend. 
um, that tells Leon that I knew Javier, uh, you know, and I told him that he is the best and he will take care of everything. So you're, it sounds to me like you're, you're passing, you're kind of passing the defendant off in terms of what he wants done to Javier. Yes, correct. And were you present for the entire, the, the entire meeting? Uh, at some point at Olive Garden, I uh, basically have here wanted to talk to Valerie alone and Jacob alone, so we kind of split at that time. Uh, for you know, whenever he wanted to talk to either. Okay. And so, just so I'm clear, who leaves? Who leaves who at the table? Um, at the table, it was uh, Valerie and Javier, and uh, me and uh, Leon Jacoby went outside. Does this appear to be the restaurant you had the meeting at? Yes. Does this appear to be you and the defendant outside speaking? Yes, we were speaking at that time. And do you recall um, anything about what the defendant was saying to you at this point or what the conversation was about? Um, he was uh, uh, worked up because, uh, worked up, uh, because it was, uh, it basically it was not resolved until now. Um, and uh, I was ensuring him that uh, Javier that will get the job done. He's one of the best, um, and he was uh, kind of worked worked up and pissed off that it didn't happen. Like I didn't get it done, and you know, uh, Megan's still alive. And after this conversation outside the restaurant, do you go back inside? Yes, we did. Now, after that that meeting, did you have any further contact with the defendant at all? No, at this point, that was uh, I handed her over to um, Javier and the team, and uh, I did not need it to actually go on. From the first person. Good afternoon. Do you prefer Motaz or do you prefer Zach? Uh, Motaz. Motaz. Hi, Motaz. Just got a couple of questions for you on cross examination. Um, starting off with, you keep making a mention that Leon needed something to go to his lawyer, you had to show his lawyer. Do you know who that lawyer was by name by chance? No, I do not. Okay, but do you know that it was not me or it was not George? Uh, At that time we were not his attorneys. It, I believe it was a female because he kept on referring, referring to her as her or she told me. Thank you. Um, now, you mentioned earlier today that you received a 2500 cash payment from Leon. Is that correct? Yes. Do you recall him ever giving you more money? Yes. Do you know how much money he did in fact give you? I remember it was in total $9,980. Is it $9,998? $80. $80. Okay. Um, would you be surprised to hear that maybe it was closer to 15000 I'm not sure. But he also gave you two Cartier watches, is that correct? Yes. Do you recall the value of those watches? No. I. Uh, do not. I did have receipts, and I was turned to the police. I just don't recall the exact. Uh, and then also, he gave you a, a diamond ring. Is that correct? Yes. But when the police first contacted you, you didn't reveal any of that to them, did you? I gave it to them. At the very first meeting, you revealed that you had two watches. I did not have them with me at that time. But when the first, when the police did first contact you, you only revealed five thousand dollars being given to you. Is that correct? At that time, I wasn't sure, and I, I explained that to the detective. Um, and f actually, the, I can't recall how I actually calculated the number 9,980, but this is where I got to whenever I told the detective. And the, the reason I remember is because it came up. Yeah. Sorry. You came to that number after the fact, the 9,000 after the first meeting? I tried, yeah, to recall exactly how much. Excuse me. You cannot talk over each other. Let him finish before you speak. 
Just before oh, you speak, please. Let's continue. So at the first meeting with the police, you revealed only $5,000 being given to you. Is that correct? As I recall, that's what I told them, yes. And I did explain yes. that I wasn't sure. Yes or no answer may be fine. So at that first meeting, it was $5,000. At the second meeting, you clarified how much money was actually taken. Yes. And after that, then you revealed that you also had two watches. Is that correct? It was the same meeting. The same, it was an in-person interview? Yes. But at that time, you did not reveal the ring, did you? Um, it was, I, I can't recall. I did give it to the cop. Um, it was actually fake. But would you be surprised to not give that ring back until the police came to question you about where the ring was? No, I gave it to him. I, I mentioned it to him. You did mention it to him? Yes. I just told him it was fake and I can't recall where I put it. So you'd be surprised if an officer said, you know, I asked why you didn't explain these watches or the Excuse rings to me. Can you slow down? Yes, I apologize. Can you ask the question? Yes. So you would be surprised if an officer did state that he asked you why you didn't reveal the ring to him when you turned over the watches? Can you repeat the question? Would you be surprised if an officer takes the stand today and testifies that he had to ask you about why you did not reveal the ring to him when you gave over the two watches? Nothing surprised me in every, in every situation, so no. So you had to set this up, in your own words, to basically con Liam. You had to, you had to sell your personation as a hitman. Is that, is that a correct classification? To the young, yes. And by doing that, you used. You ever heard this app called Wicker? Yes, it's a message app. What is Wicker? Wicker is a, a messaging service that uh, delete the message instantly after it was sent. So you have no recollection or proof of the conversations that you actually had with Leon. Yes. And you also used apps to you said mask your phone number. Is that yes. Correct? So you really kind of went out of your way to make yourself anonymous, to not be traced back. Yes, but I stayed in contact. But you stayed in contact, but you wanted to make sure nothing could come back to you. Based on his personality, he will come and he will actually stalk me, and he will find me if I give him any information. So you actively made sure that you remained on anonymous so nothing could come back to you. Is that correct? So he cannot find me, yes. That's correct. Yes. Now, you said before, Urso, that Leon first approached you with the plan of getting a hold of Megan to take her to a hotel to have a, a conversation. Is that correct? Yes. You guys wanted to reconcile the relationship? Yes. And you told him that you went ahead and you, you, you've taken her, but you didn't want to go forward and have them meet. Yes, I, I told him that I did have taken her. Did you tell Leon or make statements about how you had to rough her up a little bit? Did you have to hit her, threaten her? I can't even recall the exact words, but um, I said everything that I can to actually convince him that we actually um, did talk to her, yes. So it's safe to assume that during this time period you were trying to sell this con and that you would have used a statement saying that you had to hit her, she's hysterical, she doesn't want to talk to you right now, to make your persona be what it was? No, I was actually focusing on protecting Megan. Because in the first meeting, he did mention if it doesn't work out when he talks to her that he wants her gone. Interesting that you would, in the interest of protecting Megan, but you went out of your way to make sure there was no record of any conversation. Is that correct? Yes, because if I actually leave any uh, evidence, you might suspect me. That's okay. That's correct. And you also wanted to make sure that all messages sent were deleted. Is that correct? I do not recall that. You use an app, Wicker, that deletes all text messages. I honestly cannot recall that. You also had a way of sending an email chain, is that not correct? Yes. Where, where you would log into his email, compose a draft, and then delete it, is that correct? I gave him the, um, the email thing, but I never actually sent, sent an email or put an email. email. You would log yeah, in. It, was, it was supposed to be to actually show that I know what I'm doing. Give him uh, basically, uh, it was a tool for him to actually um, believe that um, I'm, a, I'm a missionary, a hitman, and I know what I'm doing, yes. You're going to actively sell this comp, is that correct? Uh, it's actually not, well, 
It, it, it is a, uh, it was actually an operation to keep my cover, yes. So if it was uh, to keep a cover, it's called con, it is, yes, that was actually. Uh, to sell what he needs to believe, yes. And so throughout the entirety of selling this con, in order to protect Megan, in your own words, you made sure there was no trace of any conversation, and you never went to any kind of authority to try and help. Uh, the only evidence that I was able to gather that might be concrete is the payment of watches and the ring. That's and it. Cash, which you were happy to go off and spend. I actually did not think it could be actually proved. So, yes, I did not care about that. No. And you were just happy to go and spend the money that you were spending. I did spend it, yes. And throughout your entire conversation with Leon, it was always to go forward and make her not be able to testify in court. Is that correct? Yes. It was to try and reconcile the relationship or not be able to appear in court. No, he wanted her dead. You went through to say that his original plan was to go and kidnap her and get her back to Pittsburgh. And that the, if it doesn't work, uh, he wanted her back with him. He believed that she loves him and she cannot live with him. But if he talked to her, she is actually going to be convinced that he actually, he, she's going to actually remember and get back with him. But if that doesn't work, he wanted her dead. Yes. And so it was you that came up with the plan then to stage this car accident, did you not? Yes, it would, uh, it would actually, um, to actually tell him that it would actually be staged and show them that I'm concerned about him so he can give me more trust, yes. Okay. And you also wanted to plant drugs in her car in case that didn't work to get her arrested, is that correct? It's the same plan, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't get the question. You wanted to crash the car with drugs in her car? It, the plan that I explained to him is that I would actually crash the car and plant um, the drugs so she could be arrested. Uh, And then you said today that his actual plan that he wanted was to kill Megan. That's your words? He's always been um, on the track of actually killing Megan if it doesn't go his way. Did he ever actually physically say, I want her dead? Yes, he actually even uh, proposed a way to kill her. Uh, potassium chloride to the heart. It was untraceable based on his words. In your statement to the police, why didn't you reveal that? I did. I told him he actually suggested to actually get, how to actually kill her, yes. So if we were to play your statement today in open court, the recorded statement by the police officers, we're gonna hear you tell the officers that exact statement. I'm not sure if they were recording at the time, but they did tell them, yes. I informed them about the whole uh, so again, profile so about. You're talking over him. I apologize, Your Honor. Ask the question. Again, this is not a convenient allegation that he wanted somebody dead, but yet you went through and deleted any kind of the argument the judge. It's cross-examination, Your Honor. Ask the question, please. So again, it's convenient, would you say, that there is, again, no proof that he wanted to say to you, that he ever said to you he wants her dead? It was in Olive Garden. Um, I'm not sure um, if that counts, but he did mention that he wanted them both dead at Olive Garden, yes. That he wanted to hire somebody to kill her at Olive Garden. He actually, yes, he, uh, he always mentioned to me that he wanted her dead, yes. You also testified today, too, that it was never Leon who expressed any concern towards Mac, is that correct? He never brought up he wanted him dead? Both did. Um, Leon said that uh, Mac did not allow uh, Valerie's daughter to visit because of his court case. Right, but he never went through and said he wanted Mac McDaniel dead, did he? He did in the phone call. He said... Was that phone call recorded? I believe so, yes. And he said the exact words. Was this phone call to you? Uh, at that time, I was uh, with... Uh, I called him so I can actually set up the Olive Garden thing, and he said that I need to be taking... I need to take care of the th second thing. At this point, I asked him what second thing. He said, I need you to take care of Mac. But he didn't say, I need Mac dead. You just said I need him taken care of. Yes. At that point in time, you never spoke before about Mac or what he would want to have happen to Mac, did you? No, but when he said that um, he wanted it also taken care, since we spoke about Megan um, and he wanted her killed, then I actually made the relation, yes. That's a, that's a misstatement because his original plan with Megan. Excuse me, I need to I'm very sorry. His original statement was to get Megan to Pittsburgh. 
And after that, it was to get you in trouble. His original statement was to actually, for him to actually meet with her so he can get her back, and if it doesn't work, he wants her dead. Pittsburgh is something that I told him that I did. So, with that knowledge, why did, not, why did you not inform the police on your statement to them that that's what he said? I did inform the police uh, everything that happened. As, uh, as the first meeting ha uh, happened between me and the detective, I, I did explain to the police everything as fast as I can so they can prepare and move in because at that time Leon Jacob was becoming more restless. Did you ever get in contact with Mac McDaniel? Um, I can't recall that. No, I don't think so. Did you ever hang out with or associate with Leon and Valerie McDaniel in like a public setting? Would you guys go into like pool together? Ah, uh, Slick Willis, yes. Did you ever have a conversation with Valerie outside of Leon's presence? Can you repeat the question? Did you ever have a conversation with Valerie outside of Leon's presence? Just a relative judge. It's going into any kind of other motive that Leon was not privy to, that personal knowledge of any other fact towards what he's testified to today. It's overruled. You can answer it. I, I really don't understand the question. Uh, you Did need you to ever, slow down. I uh, apologize for that. But. Did you ever have a conversation with Valerie McDaniel where Leon was not present? Um, I met with them always together. We had conversations. Usually, um, uh, Jacob would actually take me outside. All he did was ask you if you ever had a conversation with her. Yes or no? Uh, alone? No. I don't recall that, no. Did you guys ever talk on the phone? You and Valerie? I believe I did, yes. Was Leon on a three-way call? I... I, I believe he was there. Um, they were always together when, whenever um, they talked to me about anything. But you would have a conversation over the phone with Valerie, not with Leon? With, uh, yes, um, Valerie was yeah. actually there with uh, Leon, yes. Uh, so then you did have conversations with Valerie without Leon being present? He was next to her. So no, I guess. Now, you mentioned today, earlier, that you just finished probation for a case out of Harris County? Yes. And you said that that was for possession of stolen goods, is that correct? Yes. That's false, though, isn't it? Uh, it what do you mean? Possession of stolen goods, was it? What was it? Then? It was a theft charge, was it not? Um, the name of the case is, I think, is theft. I'm, yeah, I believe it was theft. I'm not a lawyer, so I, I just know that I that the cause was position of stolen property, yes. So you did enter a plea then of guilty to a theft case? Right? Yes, I did. And you also mentioned you currently have a case pending out of Fort Bend County, is that correct? Yes. What is that case for? Um, uh, for uh, possession of controlled substance, um, evading arrest, and uh, burglary of a, a home, yes. And it's your testimony today that you don't have any kind of deal worked out with Harris County for your testimony today, is that correct? Yes. Is there any kind of deal worked out with Fort Bend? No. And you believe that? Yes. You believe that they have not been any kind of communication? To kind of check to argumentative judge, what he believes about communication between DA's offices, he answered the question. Speculative divinity answered the question already, he said no. Yes, sir. Do you have any hope that testifying today will benefit your Fort Bend County case? No. Did you ever have a conversation with Leon expressing Megan's desire to go back to Pittsburgh? I did tell him, yes, she was convinced to go to Pittsburgh, yes. That she wanted to go to Pittsburgh? That I convinced her to go to Pittsburgh. But all that she needed was money? Um, I'm sorry, what? 
that she wanted to go to Pittsburgh, but she needed more money to go to Pittsburgh? I don't recall. Did you ever tell Leon or inform Leon that you were in the process of buying plane tickets to get her to go to Pittsburgh because she wanted to leave? Yes, I did say that. I remember that now. In fact, you even had hired a person or a guy of yours to get on the plane to follow her to Pittsburgh. Is that not correct? I did say that, yes. I told him that my team is actually going to make sure she left to Pittsburgh. So he can back off, and she, if she shows up to court, then it's all clear. Okay, so Leon was left under the impression that Megan wanted to go to Pittsburgh. Um, at this point, I convinced him that, yes. Pass the witness, Your Honor. Right in front of the judge. To be excused? Yes, sir. To be excused? Uh, yes, sir. All right, you're excused, sir. Thank you for your testimony.